All right, everybody. Good evening. Could you please join me for a Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Councilmember Abernathy. Present. Bush. Here. Dauphin. Here. Levesque. Here. Matola. Here. O'Connell. Here. Rogers. Here. Schoolnick. Absent. Tedford Andrew. Here. Tedford Jim. Here. Wendis. Here. Winkler. Here. Your Honor, you have a quorum. Thank you. All right, so we have Citizens Forum. Um, but the public hearings are gonna to have to start exactly on time. So I'm gonna open up Citizens Forum, but I may have to stop it at a certain point. Is there anybody here for Citizens Forum? Come on up. Oh, you're not bringing the dog? <laughs> Go over to the microphone, and if you can give your name and address. My name is David Colomb. <laughs> and I live at 55 Grove Street, Apartment 18. Um, I'm a four-time meritorious Marine Corps. Busted once. Marine at a quarter. Those are my qualifications. I can give them to you anytime you want. Okay. I also have extensive construction knowledge, including roofing, siding, electrical, and plumbing. Okay. What's going on over here at the complex is beyond horrendous. I see stuff getting done that I know is gonna cause problems in the future because I've been there, I've been in that condition. I can understand them not doing what they said because on the 5th of January, they said total gut, total gut. And if I need people to document that, I can go get it documented and return that to you. But that was what we were promised. We are not getting anywhere near that. The walls aren't being touched, they have even been sanded. Oh yeah, I was a painter too, I know. Um, they should have put kills on the ceiling because some of these places haven't been painted in 20 years, okay? Instead, they painted it with a quick botch of latex paint, and it's coming down, guys. It's coming down, and it also is bleeding through. There are watermarks coming through. The wrong paint used on the door sills, they use latex instead of enamel. And take your finger, paint, your finger and go like this, the paint peels right the hell off. The doors, they're going to change the doors because they didn't get the right ones because of the, the problem with COVID-19, I don't agree with that, okay? Uh, so they're gonna pull the doors out. Stuff is being double done, okay? Um, and there are people that bring this up, and I'll tell you right now, I expect fully to be retaliated against because I, I've been living there for a year and a half, I see the retaliation. Somebody says something, somebody gets nailed. I'm a Marine, go ahead, bring it, bring it. I'll take it and I'll give it back, okay? Um, something needs to be done, okay? Uh, I see more and more retaliation being done. Um, the areas in the back where we used to have barbecues and hang our clothes and take the pup out to go to the bathroom, all right, has now been reduced to a four-foot sidewalk. That's all we got. That's all we have. People are going to walk out of their housing complex here, and the road is right here. We're not fools. Okay, we're elderly people. We expect to be treated halfway decent or quarter decent. We're not being treated decently at all, okay? I'm not going to say too much more, but if you want to hear more, you can come talk to me anytime you want, or to, unless I'm fishing, that's my bad. <laughs> Have a good day, good evening. Thanks for letting us talk to you guys. Thank you. Anybody else for Citizens Forum? <laughs> Hi, my name is Eric McVeigh. My wife Nancy and I live at 152 Warren Ave here in the great town of Vernon with our two Boston Terriers named Olive and Riley. We wanted to come here tonight with some of our neighbors to thank Mayor Champagne as well as his staff for all the efforts put forth to rectify what had become a nightmare for us all. As many of you may have seen in the news channels, we were faced with living next door to what can only be described as a bad dream turned into reality. Mayor Champagne heard our concerns and dispatched the appropriate departments into action. Although I don't think that any of us initially understood the extent of the problem, 
Mayor Champagne and his team never flinched once the severity of the problem was discovered. Over the course of several months, town officials would check in on us neighbors, see if we needed anything, and assured us that the problem was being addressed. Although stressful and honestly disheartening at times, the light at the end of the tunnel was seen. The threat to public health was rectified, the issues at hand were addressed, and just in the last few weeks, we can see positive steps now being taken to once again make Warren Ave the best place to live in Vernon. We would, we would like to personally extend our sincere appreciation to Mayor Champagne, Fire Marshal Dan Wazalewski, Public Works Director Dwight, and his foreman, Mr. Steve Scaramella, and to all those working behind the scenes that we may not have had direct interactions with. With all this being said, there's one person who we all feel extremely grateful for, and that is Mr. Michael Picaro. Not only did Mr. Picaro understand the legal side of the issue, he heard us, he listened to us, and he displayed empathy towards us. Mr. Picaro made us feel heard, he made our concerns feel valid, and most of all, he made us feel like we mattered to the town of Vernon. It'd be easy for me to say, well, that's his job, but none of us never felt that way. Mr. Picaro, unfortunately for him at times, I think, was the sounding board for some pretty upset neighbors. <laughs> he never once downplayed any of our concerns. He never once told us to stop calling. He never once acted like it was just no big deal. For all of those things, we are extremely grateful. Mr. Picaro, Nancy and I, as well as the neighbors on Warren Ave, wish you the best of luck on your next adventure. Thank you for everything you have done for us in the town of Vernon. We miss you already, and our door is always open. Mr. Mayor, with your permission, I'd like to present Mr. Picaro a plaque. It says, with our greatest appreciation, we hereby honor Michael Picaro in recognition of your passion and commitment to the Warren Ave neighborhood. Here you go. Mayor? Okay. Um, sadly, I'm going to have to hold you on yours because we got to we have to jump into public hearings. Uh, it'll be a couple minutes. Sorry. <laughs> I love the rat and the uh, flash. <laughs> All right. Let's get into the. Uh, we, it's 7:35. We got to move into the uh, public hearing number one. Um, and I'm going to move to. Uh, Call the public hearing to order, and I need the and can the clerk read the legal notice, please? This was posted on the outside bulletin board of Town Hall and on the town website on August 12th, 2024. It was advertised in the Journal Inquirer on August 13th, 2024. Legal notice, Town of Vernon, Town Council. This is to give notice that at its regular meeting of July 16th, 2024, the Vernon Town Council scheduled three public hearings to be held on August 20, 2024, in the third floor council chambers of Town Hall Memorial Building, 14 Park Place, Vernon, Connecticut. The first public hearing will take place at 7.35 p.m. regarding an ordinance entitled Garbage and Refuse Collectors, Storing of Solid Waste, Violations and Penalty Appeals, Repealing and Replacing Sections 6 and 12 of Ordinance Number 296. The second public hearing will take place at 7.45 p.m. regarding an ordinance entitled General Penalty Repealing and Replacing Section 4 of Ordinance 194. The third public hearing will take place at 7.55 p.m. regarding an ordinance entitled Line of Duty Death Determinations. Copies of the proposed action are available at the Town Clerk's Office, 14 Park Place, Vernon, Connecticut, and on the Town's website, www.vernon-ct.gov slash government slash legal hyphen and hyphen public hyphen notices. Karen C. Daigle, Vernon Town Clerk, dated at Vernon, Connecticut, this 21st day of February, 2024. Thank you. If you notice, the, that was the legal notice for all three of our ordinances tonight. So it, under public hearing number one, um, the only change is a change in the fines. Um, they're being updated. We've already updated most of them, um, and this one is one of them that needed it, and I believe the second one is the uh, other one. All right, first of all, is there anybody in the public that wants to comment on this ordinance? All right. 
Anybody on the council? Nobody? Okay. All right. Okay, hold on one second. On the public notice, did you say the 21st or the 12th? For the reading of the public notice? It was posted on the bulletin board and the website on August 12th. Um, it was dated that February might. 21st. The notice was. Okay, all right. Somebody had a question on it. That was correct. All right, thank you. All right, if there's no questions, there's no comments, I'm going to uh, adjourn that public hearing and move into the second one. All right, I'm going to call this public, public hearing number two to order. We do not need to read the legal notice. It was already done. Um, this is, again, uh, a change of the, uh, the fines, updating them like we did with the other ones. All right, is there any questions from the public on this one? No, we can keep going. It'll be one after the next. Yep. Excuse me, right. Your Honor. I'm Must sorry. we wait till 745 when it was noticed that there no, was? No, we can just keep going. Okay. No, because they've already started. All right. No? How about town council? Any comments on this one? All right. Then I'm going to adjourn, adjourn that one. We're going to move right to the third one. Um, again, I'm going to call to order the uh, number three. There was no, uh, the legal notice has been read. And uh, any comments from the public on this? Oh, actually, let me explain what this one is. Uh, the state passed a law essentially taking the power of um, the line of the, the um, so the line of duty deaths, essentially what they did is they said that the chiefs would make that determination. Um, and if you wanted it to stay with HR, you ha actually had to pass an ordinance. That's what this is, all right? And, and no matter what the workers' compensation is, that should be determined by HR. The chiefs always have a part in that, but it always has to remain with HR because there's a lot of laws that are involved in, in, in all of this. So what we're doing is we're doing exactly what the state law said, and we're, we're, leaving, we're leaving the determination with HR. All right. Is there anybody from the public that would like to comment on that? Right. Any town council people? Brian. To you, Mr. Mayor, or Mr. Spadachini, whatever. Just a for clarification. Line of duty death, we, is this just for police officers or police fire? Fire, fire police, yeah. How about EMTs. like, how about, um, excuse me, do I, like public works or some, nope, you know, no, no, non-emergency? No, but basically what we're doing is we're saying that uh, basically any, it, anything is, it's all determined by HR. HR anyway, yeah. Right. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, all right, well, um, then I'm going to adjourn that public hearing. We are going to go back to Citizens Forum. Sir, come on up. Hi, good evening. I'm Patrick Sullivan. I live at 24 White Street in Vernon. Um, quite a fitting topic for today. I've been in Vernon now for about seven years. It's a very nice town. I uh, lived all over Mass, uh, Southern Connecticut, California. I do enjoy it here. Uh, for the past 11 months, I've been surrounded by trash, overgrown lawns, and basic hoard on Earl and White Street. Topics dealing with public works, Department of Health on trash, left out in tarps, rugs, batting, mats, uh, really just sprawled around the neighborhood. So constantly calling on public works to issue citations and investigations, and a bit of a frustration that after almost a year, um, well, a little less than a year, there is no resolution in sight. You know, Department of Health is involved now uh, for quality of living, uh, infestations with the neighbors. Um, but even today, hearing about the fines increasing for uh, the zoning, if the fines aren't being paid now, what difference does it make if they go higher? So my concern is living in this town and the frustration is just being surrounded by so much trash in the neighbors and getting a resolution on how it will be resolved. Um, it's, you know, keeps on being passed through the hierarchy to say it has to go through the court system, to Department of Health, not Tallinn County, but Hartford County, not either, but to uh, Northeast Regional. 
So it's just a topic I'd like to discuss a bit more in the future. Yeah, uh, normally I don't comment on when people come up, but I will say this, this was a conversation we were having today and we're bound by state law and we have repeat offenders. And the problem is, is that with the way state law works, you got to notify them for, I think it's 30 days. And then you got to go in, you can, you can take care of the problem, but you know, like cutting grass, you know, when you get two feet, two feet of grass, okay. We notify them for the month. It gets to the 29th day. They go cut the grass. Guess what? We got to start all over again. So what we're going to try and do in the coming year is, uh, or before the next legislative session, what we're going to try and do is we're going to see if we can change the law. Perfect. Okay. And we're going to go through our lawmakers, the four of them that represent the town, and we're going to basically call them in and say, listen, this is the problem we're facing. And it's exactly what you said. It, you, we can pass any law, but we're missing the teeth. So we're, we're going to try and change it so that we can actually go ahead and take care of the problem right away. All right. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. All right. Anybody else for citizens forum? Okay. We're going to executive will be moved to the end as normal. Uh, I had a couple of presentations. All right. All right. Since the last town council meeting, uh, I, I attended a birthday celebration of Beverly Geckler. She has lived in Vernon since she was 15 and was celebrating her 106th birthday. Ooh. All right. And uh, she's a very funny lady, even just the small amount of time I spent with her. But lots of longtime friends and family were in attendance uh, to wish her well. It was nice because they had a certain time that people could go in in between and it was a constant flow of people. All right. The Horowitz Pool update. <laughs> You know, we really expected us to uh, to get the pool done. But when you have a pool from 1952, that's when the pool house was made. And basically the pool went in. You, you never know what you're going to run into. So I asked them to just give me a list of, of, of what was done um, with the pool. They kind of gave me this. All right. It's a lot that we did to the pool house and it, the pool would have been done, but the pool house ended up turning into be the problem. But instead of going and telling you everything about this list, what I want to do is just give you some reasons why the pool took so long. All right. Some of it, you know, because we've already talked about it. Now, all the contracts are pretty much done. We're not going out to bid anything so I can basically talk about it freely. But when it started, we knew there was a problem with the sewer pipe. Well, when we got into it, the solution we already had in place wasn't there. So we had to, uh, we had to dig it up and, we, and figure out a different way. Well, because this was 1952, they, they dug up the sewer pipe and in the process, they ripped up the wires to the little league fields, to the sprinkler and to the tennis courts. Um, so we had to kind of fix all those. It's, it's terrible to have live wires hanging out there and there. So we, they finished that. And then they kept going and working on the pool with the painting, the, the new roof, if you've seen the new roof up there. Uh, the new roof was because the, the old cement roof uh, um, is still good, but in order to protect it, we put the, uh, the new roof up at an angle so we can keep the water off the, the roof itself. But then it ended up the water pipe was broken, so we couldn't get any water, so we had to dig it up again. In the process of digging it up, somebody broke the drainage pipe. So we had to dig the drainage pipe up. And then we came back to you once already. The curtain drain we put in and we put the, the, the pipe was kind of off to the side thinking that it would be sucked right back into the ground but lower than the pool. Well, so much water came out of the curtain drain, which was north towards the tower of the pool. So much water came out of there, it was actually creating a little bit of a lake. So remember, we, when we came back, we needed a little bit of extra money because we had to connect that into the drainage system. So these are just a couple little things that, that we ran into. And then we talked about the, the steel columns in the basement that had rotted. So we had to come back and we had, a, we had to get those replaced and dug out. Um, the wiring. So I go up there and I'm asking the electrician, hey, what's taking so long? He goes, listen, I'm going to start out with saying, I don't know how this building didn't burn down. So the wiring for all the lights in the building was literally under the rubber mat 
on top of the cement. So we had to go rewire the whole building. All right, so that just turned into something that was, we didn't quite see that coming. And then uh, the seal columns, and then we're getting close, we're getting close, and a week and a half ago, we hit with lightning and took out one of our brand new pumps. I mean, every time I turned around, it was just another thing. I could keep going. The list is pretty extensive. But you know, when you play with these old buildings, you run into this and you know when we're building when we're talking about citizens block which is even older that's from what 1869 i mean the stuff we found over there is pretty amazing but our guys did a really good job with it so we're hoping it looks like we got the estate inspection and the health department inspection done and we may be able to finish this by next week we're thinking about opening it for for just a couple days free to the public come check it out and uh come swim because obviously we're at the end of the season. But some of the stuff we ran into, we never would have even imagined. And, you know, with, when you look for electric wires, today's wires, they put tape down. So when you're looking for it, you can find it. In the 1950s, they didn't do that. And you never know what you're going to run into. I guess that's all I can say. So we're getting there. The pool will be done by, I'm hoping, next week. The inspections actually look good. We got a punch list we still got to get through. And the punch list is pretty simple. A lot of it's painting and stuff like that. So um, I'm hoping we get through that pretty quick. All right. As a reminder, students are returning to school on August 29th. Please be extra cautious while traveling on our streets. Watch out for pedestrians and bicyclists around the school districts in particular. Our next meeting is September 17th. Um, September meeting marks the end of our summer schedule, and there will be two meetings in October. The, f on, uh, the first is on October 1st, and then the 15th. Finally, I, I would like to extend a, spe um, a special thank you to Michael Picaro. I've, I've worked with some, you know, some pretty good people in the past, and people that I've got along with very well. And... Uh, you know, I, I think our friends just got up and talked about them. When we uh, we start this, you know, I, I, I'm great at saying, hey, Mike, why don't we do this? And then we sit and we figure it out. But once we got to the point where we knew we had to do something over there, you know, you, you led the charge on that one. And we made sure. And then Dan got involved in the whole team. The whole team understood the direction we were going, and we did everything we could because we saw this as a major health problem for those neighbors. But that's just one thing. I mean, I could keep going through the list, and, and I think as a team, you and I work great together, you know, and I'm going to miss you. And, you know, we still can't announce where he's going, but I'll tell you what, we're losing somebody great in this town. We really are. And, uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> Thankfully, I got his personal cell phone so that when I get myself in big trouble, uh, I'm going to send a text or call him and say, what? Uh, Mike, what would you do? <laughs> but it goes, yeah, it goes two ways. <laughs> Mike's going to stick around, though. He's going to be still our emergency management guy for a little while. Um, I'm happy he's going to stick around and do that for a little bit. Um, that way I can stay. I'm, I'm, I'm still your boss. You got you to gotta help me out with this, you know. But, uh, you know, this, 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 when we hired Mike uh, way back when, I mean, he stood out. I mean, he was definitely number one coming off that list. And he proved himself throughout the years here. And uh, I don't think people quite understand the, uh, the mark he's left. So, I, and, and you know, when you, when you first came in, I, I, uh, I was so happy when you came in. Because the last time I was left alone, I ended up with an employee issue and, and I had to do the investigation and being a policeman, I did it as a police investigation. So when he came in and I handed him a 19-page report, single typed, single spaced, and he looked at it and said, okay. Because <laughs> I don't want him to know everything, so I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. <laughs> but, um, you know, we're going to, you know, we'll move on just, just normal instead of me saying, hey, Mike, you got to do this now. I'm going to have to do it. Don's going to help me out a little bit, too. In fact, it's going to be, uh, we'll probably have four or five people doing your job for a little while. So, but uh, I'm going to miss you. And, and you know what? I, I just, you know, I think Mike deserves a round of applause. You know, he really does. You know?
I'd keep going, but I'd probably tear up too. So I'm just going to leave it at that. You know, if you start to tear up, just bite your lip. It works good. <laughs> the other thing is you're going to see on your table, we're going to, I'm going to ask you to add two additional items today. Um, one of them is that we had a senior citizen in town who overpaid. Um, that's number one. And she did it um, on the line. And she, she says she's not very computer savvy, but, you know, so... Um, she needs her money back to pay her bills, so we're gonna move that. And the other one is, uh, I when the chief came in in the budget, it had a full size police vehicle, and I basically said that uh, that's not needed for the chief of police. I hope he's not going to get any in any pursuits. But you know, our, our full size police vehicles can be run three shifts a day. His is, his will not be. So I, I I asked him to go out and find something cheaper, and uh, that this is what you that this is what he found. And uh, it is it is cheaper, and we'll you know we we've got to take a vote later on to add the agenda items, but I just want to give you a heads up on what those are. All right. Let's keep going. Let's go to consent. Uh, Mr. Mayor, motion to move the consent agenda as written. Seconded by Laura. Are we pulling any of them? No. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, let's see. New business number one. Mr. Mayor, the town council hereby grants the building permit fee waiver in excess of $162 requested by the Vernon Historical Society relative to the window replacement project at 734 Hartford Turnpike, Vernon, Connecticut. Second. Seconded by John. So as you can see there, um, when you read the memo, once I get to it, sorry. When you read the memo, there's certain fees that the state still collects on these. So those fees, um, you know, the town's not going to pay those. Those will still, they'll still have to pay those. But we, it's, it went from uh, instead of a one thousand fifty-eight dollars, uh, they would pay eight. Uh, I'm sorry, they, they're going to pay one hundred and sixty-two. Um, that's what it breaks down to. So we're waiving essentially uh, eight hundred ninety-six dollars. What's that? Right. Um, are there any questions on that? Okay, all those in favor? Unanimous. Brian, number two. Mr. Mayor, the town council consistent with the town of Vernon personal rules and regulations, section 4.1B, entitled job descriptions, hereby adopts the job description of senior engineering technician and property maintenance inspector. Seconded by Laura. All right, I want to add a correction. Marianne brought this up to us. Um, on page one of the new one, if you go down to essential job fun function, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight lines down, um, it's, there's, the word approved is in there twice. We're going to remove the first approved. See that? Everybody see it? All right, and then if you go down uh, other job functions, it should be may stake, S-T-A-K-E sites, not state sites. All right. Um, thank you, Marianne, for catching those two. All right. Any questions beyond uh, those two? And on the, uh, the other one for the property maintenance inspector, any questions on that one? All right, all those in favor? Unanimous. Brian, number three. Mr. Mayor, the town council consistent with the town of Vernon personnel rules and regulations. Hold on, hold on one second, I'm sorry. sorry. Okay. Those two corrections, do we have to take a vote on the, or, or did that consider the vote? We're all set? Okay, as corrected. All right. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Mayor, the town council consistent with the town of Vernon personnel rules and regulations, section 4.1B, entitled job descriptions, hereby adopts the job description of administrative assistant, WPCA, and DPW mechanic, non-CDL. Seconded by Mary Ann. Okay, um, so the, the big one that I, I just wanna put, point out is the non-CDL. So we're, we're having a little more difficulty finding mechanics, and a lot of it has to do because there's a CDL added. 
So we're, we're removing the CDL so we can f have an opportunity to get more mechanics. All right. All right. Any, any, any questions on either one of those? Phyllis. I just wanted to clarify on the addition attends WPCA meetings and is the designated recording secretary for SANE. So that's a, seems to me a significant job change. Doesn't have to go through the union. I mean, that's adding evening hours. I believe that person's already there. Yeah, so it's not, it's a, it's, they're already at the meeting. Oh, okay, because it's highlighted here as a change. Yeah, but they're already there. Okay. Now okay. we're just putting it in. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right. Anybody else? Brian. So just a thought um, on the CDL, uh, DPW mechanic non CDL, was it CDL because they were going to drive the trucks? You know, into like the bay and work on them and out of the bay or something like that. Well, it's CDL for driving them out on the road. So, okay, so the mechanic would fix it and take it out for a road. Right. Thing. Somebody else will have to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Was that Mr. Reinowitz fine with that? That was a request from the mechanics. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep. I guess so. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anybody else? All right. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. New business number four. Mr. Mayor, the town council hereby approves the new town hall, new town hall hours as presented. Sorry. Seconded by Laura. All right. So what we what we've done with the four three schedule when we put in te, that into place, it, this is kind of um, uh, making it more friendly for employees. You know, the, statistically, it's showing that employees want more time off. And as you guys know, they enthusiastically supported that. So the next idea is to kind of build on that and move the long day to Tuesday instead of Thursday, which means instead of getting out at 7 on Thursday, they would get out at 4.30 and start their weekend a little earlier. This would not go into effect until after the election. I want no confusion I want to make sure that they understand, you know, we'll take the whole year explaining to them that the hours have changed, but I don't want any confusing leading up to the election because in case somebody wants to come in and ask for an absentee ballot. All right. Any questions on that? Phyllis. So I'm glad there's some time frame for people to adjust. Um, is there some consideration for people who may have made Tuesday night commitments? We've already asked all the employees, and the employees are overwhelmingly in support of this. That's good to hear. Okay. Thank you. But I'll also understand, when we, do, when we do something, if the employee has something like that's a problem, um, we work with them, all right? And, and we've always done that. So there's people that still work a 5-2 schedule that are, that are here in the town hall. But... You know, we just make sure that, you know, we can work with them. And it, it, I would rather keep an employee than uh, make it tough for them. So, all right. Anybody else? Do you have something, Marianne? Yeah. Yeah. I only had one concern. We have town council meetings on Tuesday. Yeah. How's the parking out there? The employees, <laughs> well, the employees leave at 7. Okay. Okay. So we'll be good. So you're going to see the park, parking lot emptying um, as we're coming in. Okay. All right. Yeah. I want to make, you know, trust me, that was my first thought too. And then we, we actually thought about it and we, we don't think we're going to run into that too much. So anybody else? All right. So we're not going to vote for a day. We're just voting to implement this. And like I said, we're going to do it after the election. All right. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right. And the last one is just an update. Uh, Diane basically said she was going to come in in, in, in August and update us on the the postage agreement. So she's just going to give us an update on it. Through the mayor. Um, everything turned out the way we thought it would, that it makes perfect sense to leave Pitney Bowes and join the, um, the courier service. Um, the numbers came out the way we thought they would. We've, uh, for 90 days, we've been doing our mailing with, um, in a combination with um, the courier service that takes the mail to the site and also the mailing site itself. 
um, we were able to reduce one of the contracts because they wanted to charge $15 a day if we put something that was sealed into a bundle that was unsealed because that created problems for them, um, and $20 a day to transport to their facility. Because we hired them as our courier, those came off the postage contract, so we don't have to pay those fees. Um, we save six cents per piece. Uh, last year, in 11 months, we used um, 83,387 pieces of mail. So if you multiply that time the six cents, it's $5,837 that you're saving. In addition, you're saving 11723 11723.49 actually, um, for all the equipment that we were leasing. So um, it is turning out the way we thought it would. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions anybody has. So one of the uh, things I heard today was so, you know, somebody had this confusion that this, this was going to the facility, which is where in? Shelton. Shelton. They're like, oh, it's going to Shelton, then it's coming back to our post office. That's not true. It goes to Shelton and then goes right to the main post office. I believe it's in Hartford, right? It goes, it goes to, I think it goes to Providence. Providence, okay, which is the But it's a full turnaround and they guaranteed right. a day quicker and it's so been it, tested, so we right. know that it works. And, and that's what I wanted to say. The process that we're using now is actually quicker than if you go down to the Rockville post office and you drop it in the mailbox there. So, um, understand it. Saving money and a day quicker. I, I'll take that. All right. Any other questions on it? No. Thank you, Diane. Yeah. All right. Let's go down to um, uh, hold on. We're, I think that's this one under after the that's after the ordinances. That's what I thought. All right, Brian. Let's go to uh, uh, ordinance number one. Mr. Mayor, the Town Council, consistent with Chapter 5, Section 4 and 6 of the Vernon Town Charter, hereby moves to approve the ordinance entitled Ordinance Number, an ordinance entitled Garbage and Refuse Collectors, Storing of Solid Waste, Violations and Penalty, Appeals, Repealing and Replacing Sections 6 and 12 of Ordinance Number 296. Second, Second by Marianne. Does anybody have any questions on that? All those in favor? Unanimous. Ryan? Mr. Mayor, the Town Council, consistent with Chapter 5, Section 4 and 6 of the Vernon Town Charter, hereby moves to approve the ordinance entitled Ordinance Number, an ordinance entitled General Penalty, repealing and replacing Section 4 of Ordinance Number 194. Second. Seconded by John. Any questions on that one? All in favor? Unanimous. Ryan. Mr. Mayor, the Town Council, consistent with Chapter 5, Section 4 and 6 of the Vernon Town Charter, hereby moves to approve the ordinance entitled Ordinance Number, an ordinance entitled Line of Duty Death Determinations. Second. Seconded by Mary Ann. Any questions on that one? No. What was that, what was that noise? That's your phone. It was mine? I turned it off. All right, all those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Uh, all right. Identification and adoption of additional agenda items. So we have to vote in order to um, to add these two items. So, Brian, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to add new business items six and new business items seven to the agenda. Seconded by Laura. All right. Any questions on that? All right, all those in favor? Unanimous. All right, Num new business number six, Brian. Mr. Mayor, the town council hereby approves one tax refund for the current fiscal year in the amount of $610.09 as outlined in the memorandum dated August 19th, 2024 from Terry Jarney, Collector of Revenue, to Michael J. Picaro, Town Administrator, relative to same. Second. Seconded by Laura. All right, any questions on that? All those in favor? Unanimous. Brian? 
Mr. Mayor, the Town Council hereby resolves in accordance with Chapter 12, Section 9 of the Vernon Town Charter that it is in the best interest of the Town of Vernon to waive the sealed bid requirements for the purchase of one new Dodge Durango GT in the amount not to exceed $42,693.50 from Bowles Motors of Ellington. Second. Seconded by Marianne. Any questions on this? No? So, All right. I'll, go ahead. So just, just to comment, I'm happy with uh, waiving it because uh, evidently um, Mr. Jensen did do very good, um, really just did the same thing, bidding out, I guess, and did this. So we do seem to get a good price. Yeah, he did some, he did some good work. He did some good work on it. Chief, you happy with this one? Absolutely. <laughs> what else is he going to say? No, I had a Yugo lined up. <laughs> it was vintage. <laughs> all right, all those in favor? Unanimous. All right, Brian, executive, uh, let's do the minutes first. Mr. Mayor, the Town Council waives the reading of the minutes of the regular Town Council meeting of July 16th, 2024. That minutes of said meeting be approved. Second by Laura. All right, uh, any corrections or deletions? All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Let's, all right. Uh, executive session. Mr. Mayor, the town. Oops. The t Mr. Mayor, the Town Council, pursuant to the authority given in Connecticut General Statutes 1-206C, hereby moves to go into executive session to discuss security. Invites Town Administrator Michael J. Picaro to attend. Second. Seconded by Marianne. All those in favor? Unanimous. We'll be back. Uh, <laughs> and don't worry, it'll be during business hours. So those that work can never go. All right, Brian. Mr. Mayor, the Town Council hereby approves the application for and receipt of the State of Connecticut Cybersecurity Grant in the amount of $18,522 with an in kind match of 10%. Second by Laura. All those in favor? Unanimous. Brian. Mr. Mayor, motion to adjourn. Second, Second by Laura. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, guys.